with our TV audience. Good morning. My name is Rob. The Spirit of God fell on me and, and all the pain was gone and, 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 and my body was just glorified. It was just such a wonderful feeling. And I've never looked back. I don't know what it was. I've never gone to a doctor to find out what it was. It doesn't matter what it was. Jesus healed me. And he's in this building and I just want you guys to know that. that uh, 13 years ago this happened here and he's, he's healed us a lot more ways than one. He's healed us financially. He healed, he's healed my family financially. We were taken down to a point where we had $5,000 a month in debts and and we didn't have any income to pay it, and people were just coming and, and, and robbing us. And, and, and God took us down, but He let me take you down too far. He took us down just enough to, to teach us, to, to, to raise us up again. And I tell you, we've been blessed more than blessings could, 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 you could ever imagine. Like the floodgates of heaven open and bless our family so much since. And I just thank Jesus for it all. Thanks, guys. Amen. Thank you, Rob. You know, it's good to be able to hear what God is doing in people's lives. Sometimes I believe testimonies are the greatest things that we can hear or uh, just what God is doing in their lives. And you know what? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God heals. I'm not believing every word of this book, certainly. And I looked rich. give you uh, a little bit about the power of prayer and my, power of prayer and my families and, and my life. And uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce my family and my beautiful wife, Kasha. That did we listen? That's over in James 2. Go, go by the back to your Bible here. Go back by the back of your Bible to James. Just shortly before Revelation here, you'll find it. James. 
James 2 1. 2 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment. What is vile? What is stinky? Stinky, yeah, some horrible, smelly looking beggar off the street comes to you and wants to know the truth. You can let him in your building? <laughs> most of you won't. I guarantee you most of you won't. Try it, guys. Try it. Dress yourself up as one of these. Maybe that's devious. Maybe it's, it's, it sounds deceitful. Why not? Why not prove it? Dress yourself up. Nasty, smelly, stinky, rubble, stinky fish on you. Go, into a, go to a church building. See if they'll let you in. Dirty up your face. Try it. <clears throat> and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say to him, Sit thou here in a good place. And say to the poor, Stand thou there. Sit here under my footstool. You old stinky thing. Yeah, yeah sit here under my footstool. I won't answer the word of God. but uh, I know what these guys are thinking. Now, let's see what our Apostle Paul said. Let's, let's see what our apostle, our apostle Paul said. You know, we, we looked at what Stephen said earlier in Acts. Let's see in Acts 7. Let's see you know what, what Apostle Paul says in Acts 17. Acts 17, 24. Acts 17, 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Wow. Verse 25. Neither is worship with man's hands. With man's hands. Neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing that he giveth all life and breath and all things. So what happens if you go into church building? Oh, they're all holy, holier than holding up their hands, worshiping uh, with hands. With men's hands, these men worshiping with their hands. What are they doing worshiping with their hands? What's that? They say, oh yeah, but Moses, they held Moses' hand, hands up to win a war. No, what do you do with your hands up in the air? And all these, especially the charismatic are teaching, what's wrong with you? Something's wrong with you if you don't put your hands up in church. We're not supposed to worship him with our hands. You see that? And so he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. We are the breath and life of his word. Not the buildings that people are taught to worship in. They claim you need to come and have fellowship with us in our beautiful building, they say. Have you seen the nice carpets we worship? The nice elevated preaching platform? The beautiful altar we kneel at? Oh, and that beautiful wooden pulpit I preach from. Sometimes it's glass and the goose rises up in the air like Kenneth Hagin guy. This real expensive fancy one would rise right up out of the floor into the air. Yeah, they're worshiping their buildings because they want your worship and your tithes and offerings. You notice the pastors at the front and the elevated platform, you're all holding your hands up to him? Who are you worshiping? Jesus said, don't worship me with your hands. Who are you worshiping, guys? Huh? They want your tithes and offerings. It's all about the love of money, their income, their hirelings. Any man that builds a church building that you gotta to come to his building to get saved, they might, maybe people get saved in there, maybe a hundred a year, I doubt it. I doubt it. You go on the street and preach pass out tracks, you can reach thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and even a million in a year. Absolutely. But you're not going to do that in a church building. You're not going to bring that many people in. Unless you're a prosperity gospel and they're coming for, for the wrong reason, not even getting saved. Anyhow, they're hirelings. You need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, which is easier to find in the wilderness. Yeah, like in, 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 in the background or some of the videos I preach in than in a church building. It's a lot easier to find God and get close to him out there, opening his word, we'll get, we'll get, bringing the King James Bible with you. Now let's go to Acts 20.28. 20, go, to, go to Acts 20.28. 20, Acts 20.28. 20, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's right, he purchased it with his own blood. 
Jesus Christ is God Almighty. And his death on the cross and shedding of his blood purchased us, the body. Our jobs, after we're saved, are to get out and teach people what Christ did and his words. Not pull them into a building to worship unequally oaked, yoked, yoked with lost people, hoping they might get saved too. Teaching, we need to be teaching what the scriptures say. It's a job of any true Bible-believing Christian. This part of the body does not belong to a building. No, 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 no. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Go to 1 Corinthians 3.16. Corinthians 3 16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Wow. True Bible believer? I'm the temple of God? You're a true Bible believer? You're the temple of God. What are we doing going to those temples? Give those men money for? Huh? So, real true Bible believers don't go to a social club buffet to worship the living God. And all the Baptists bragging, yeah, our bellies, you know, we're going to have a meal at church. It's a buffet. It's a social gathering. Sure, some of them teach some of the truth. Yeah. But we're not supposed to go to church. We are the church. You don't go to a social club buffet to worship the living God. You can be in better and longer fellowship with God right where you're sitting or while you are on an outing for a week or so maybe even for a day a day outing more so more so than if you went to church for most or all of your life that's right first Corinthians uh, 619 we're gonna go to first Corinthians 619 now 19 what Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body belongs to God, and he will show you what to do. Give your life to him, not man's rules for a building, that they will lead you to the legit serious error and rules to put you under their own little laws. Tell you what to dress, what not to dress. Are you kidding me? Come on, guys. Go into those one of those buildings all stinky and rip reggae old clothes, watch what happens. They'll lead you to serious error. There's no biblical basis to this church building system today. And the Baptists, they, they all claim you got to come to church, yeah? But their, their system's only a couple hundred years old. Where was it before that? Ephesians 2.19. Let's go to Ephesians 2.19. Ephesians 2. 2.19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth, unto and holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for habitation of God through the Spirit. Our body is a living building, not a dead church building. We're in church right now. We're talking. We got, we got the book open. When two or three are in my presence, there will I be also. We got the book open. I'm just paraphrasing that. We can go back and look at the scripture. Talking about this with his word, you better get your relationship with Jesus Christ figured out with fear and trembling. And don't go to a church building to do it. They just want your money. Read these scriptures in the King James book. He will lead you to, the, to, to this book. If you have a corrupt Bible, and but not very likely if you go to church. Not very likely. You're much easier getting led out of a corrupt Bible to the truth if you let the Holy Ghost teach you than you are if you go to church because they'll put you under the rules and laws. 
So call upon the name of the Lord. Pray. Ask him to save you. God will show you what his plan is for you. Ask him for his help. Call out to him. He will show you. If you ask believing every word of this book, this King James Bible, and it's pure, that it is pure, perfect, and preserved word of God, Jesus Christ on earth. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, guys. I, I, I hope uh, we can all learn what a church is. It's us. Amen. Amen. You won't find him there. But the people need to know that. The people need to be warned. They're being lied to. You know, and the people with new Bible versions can't understand this. Because the separation of Gospels was cut out of their corrupt Bibles. And they think there's just one Gospel for everybody. And you've got to go to church building to hear it. <coughs> but if you want to see that, that's in Galatians uh, 2 7. Keep your finger in Acts 7 here and go over to Galatians. Galatians 2. Over to, you guys got to see this because it's not in the New Bibles. Galatians 2. They, they, they corrupt it so you can't see it. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, this is Paul speaking, as the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter. We got two gospels here. We got a gospel of the uncircumcision and a gospel of the circumcision. And all these pastors are telling us, oh, you're not going to tell me there's more than one gospel. And probably you guys have heard pastors say that too. You can't tell me there's more than one gospel. Oh yeah, there's at least seven gospels. And I'm just showing you two of them here. I've had pastors harshly condemn me over my showing them with the scriptures there's more than one gospel. And it's very clear here there's at least two of them, right? One for the Jews, uncircumcised or Abraham's gospel. Circumcised or Abraham's gospel. And one for the Gentiles, uncircumcised or or us being saved today without the law. Because we're not circumcised. If you don't believe. You see? So you're being, you can get saved today without the law. You don't have to be under the law anymore. And the, the church buildings want to put you back under the law. So I can, well most of them anyhow. I can also clearly show you several more gospels. God gave to us for different people at different times. Rightly dividing these scriptures. Absolutely. And there's one in, in, uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble, which an angel flies over and proclaims. Everyone will see this angel flying and proclaiming. There's another gospel there too. There's all kinds of gospels in here. <laughs> but that's another teaching. And why these people don't believe the King James Bible is God's pure, perfect words. Because then they have to accept the fact there's more than one gospel. And they can't go on with their little, little church clubs. You've got to shut them down. Acts 7.49 Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what place is of my rest? Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. So, what house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is thy place of rest? God just said it again. Look at that. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? He doesn't go into a building. Then I'm going to build a house for the Lord. That doesn't happen anymore. We get filled with him when we get saved. Acts 7, 49, and then 50. Hath not my hand made all these things? Get into nature, guys. Go read the scriptures in nature. Hath not my hand made all these things? Most of these church buildings will just destroy you. <clears throat> so Stephen here is clearly showing them a building or a temple has nothing to do with a church, which is what I just said basically today. As Jesus is not in those buildings, if you check the back of the gospel tracts that we put out, it's got Acts 7. Uh, it's got this in there. Acts 7. They have chosen new gods. Deuteronomy 32.12 They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to new gods. Judges 5.8 They chose new gods. Acts 7.48 Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet. Wow, Jesus is, in the, is not in the church buildings. Did you see that? 
That was Paul. That was, uh, Acts 7. That would have been Stephen saying that. Stephen saying that. Was that 38 or 48? Acts 7, 48. How be it the north side dwelt not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. That's right on the back of all the gospel tracts we hand out, all the custom ones. They tell those people in the church buildings the pastors are lying to them. Now Stephen here is also illustrating that it's how you respond to the creation around you is how you really respond to and what you think about God. You know? The Jewish leaders here, the Jewish leaders there thought of the temple as their God. You have to go to the temple to meet God and be with God. And that's exactly what they're doing in the church buildings here today too. Exactly the same thing. If you go back to 1 Kings 8.27... <clears throat> but will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded. This is Solomon's house, this huge temple he built. And he said it couldn't contain Jesus, couldn't contain God. God's much too big for that. He's not, even Solomon said, he's not in my building. And all these pastors are lying us today saying, oh, the Holy Spirit just showed up. The Holy Ghost just showed up. Come on in, get saved. They're liars. They're liars. <coughs> so God also was not in the house of David because it clearly could not contain him. And back to Acts 7.51. Acts 7.51. Yeast. Now, these are Jews that, that Stephen is talking to. They're all circumcised, right, in the flesh. They've all had their foreskins cut off because they're Jewish priests, Jewish leaders. Don't forget that when you hear this verse. Acts 7, 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. He, Stephen just gave him the biggest insult he could have possibly given them. Because they've circumcised themselves, they've abided by the law, and he says you're uncircumcised. And so were your fathers, who all practiced circumcision. But in their heart and ears, of course. So this is a legal condemnation Stephen is rebuking them for. He's speaking of the spiritual circumcision, which they did not listen to or understand. But they did understand that they would lose the promises of God. Because if they're uncircumcised, and they circumcise themselves already, they will lose the promises of God. They understood that perfectly. So they're completely pricked to their hearts by now. Verse 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they, they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. So he just called them murderers, yes. And they know they'll lose the promises for that. Who have rejected the law by disposition of angels and have not kept it. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So now Stephen is really going after them, really pricking their hearts with the truth, getting them really angry at themselves for what he said. Verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now what was Jesus doing standing up? There's only one other time in Scripture when this was mentioned, and Jesus said it. 
before they persecuted him and had him put away and murdered. And Jesus, I mean, they remembered that. So Jesus sits at the right hand of God. Why is he standing? All through the scriptures, Jesus sits at the right hand side of God. By the way, this is Jesus sitting at the right hand side of God. He only stands in judgment to come back to earth. But Jesus actually prophesies this back in the book of Mark 14. That's right. He prophesied that this was going to be said. <clears throat> so go to Mark 14, 16. You'll see that. Matthew, Mark 14, 16. See what Jesus prophesied and see what you just heard. Mark 14. Sixty. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said unto him, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. That's when they had Jesus executed. And here in the book of Acts was a turning point of salvation from the Jews to us Gentiles. Jesus was actually ready to bring the kingdom to the Jews if they would have if they would have accepted what Stephen was saying. He was going to bring the kingdom down to them right there. But they rejected his words. This was the last draw with Jesus. Rejecting them as king. Rejecting him as king. Just like Jesus will reject us from being kings for rejecting his words today. We reject these as his pure, perfect words. He'll reject us from being kings. And these are the words of the Lord. Now watch what these wicked religious leaders do to Stephen after hearing him say exactly what Jesus had said. Back in Mark. It pricked them to their hearts so they sent him to his death. And that's in Acts 7, 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran about him with one accord. Stop. Or can you imagine these guys running around with their hands over their ears? Didn't want to hear nothing. Just a little kids. <coughs> kids block their ears when they don't want to hear something. That's what these religious leaders were doing. Verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And this is where we first run into Paul, Saul who became Paul. This was the first mention of Saul, who became Paul, who was actually one of the men against Stephen. To stone him to death. Can you imagine? Verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now, this verse is very interesting because God has been taken out of all the new corrupt Bible versions, new gods. This verse is scriptural proof that Jesus is God. And they took it out of all the new versions. If you look back at that, the same thing you see with all the prosperity preachers. They all have a banner behind them saying, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. 
You ever see that? And all these uh, Kenneth Copeland services and stuff. Just Jesus is Lord behind them. Which is not even in the scripture. The real Jesus is the Lord. And they all say Jesus is Lord behind them. They, they, they don't want you to know that Jesus is God. That's what all these guys are doing. These wicked men today also leaving out that Jesus is God. Verse 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Now this is Stephen. Stones flung all over him, probably bleeding to death by now. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Cried with a loud voice. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. he died sleeping in Christ now this is a prayer from Stephen actually he's crying out to the Lord right not to hold to their charge and it's it's, it's different yet much like when Jesus died, died on the cross because what did Jesus pray when he died on the cross father forgive them for they know not what they do and of course he was silent before his death before he said this in this instance the Jewish leaders personally killed Stephen knowing what they were doing unlike turning Jesus over to the Romans and they had the Romans kill him back, in, 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 back there in the book of Mark, in the Gospels. <clears throat> so because of this turning point, the church then went into, great, went into great persecution. Yet we can today, as Gentiles, be saved because of this turn of events. This when God handed everything over to us as Gentiles. And you'll see that as you go through the book of Acts, that everything went over to the Gentiles. So Father God, thanks for this teaching today. And... and uh, and uh, hopefully it's blessed somebody here and uh, bless someone later on that hears it. And uh, just uh, let everyone be touched with your truth, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. They took out God out of the New Bible versions, verse 59. And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. But they took that out of all the new Bible versions. You know, if you ever check that out. Acts 7, 59. Where is the police? Where is the police? Can you use this? I don't know. He's the nurse. Whatever you need. Somebody can help direct traffic. The guy blocked it off. He blocked out with his car.
deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. <laughs>